Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and in this video we're going to be looking at transformations of functions and this is the first of two videos that are based on core maths and um, notably A-level maths but are applicable to most other maths modules. Okie doke, so transformations of functions. Now the first thing we need to get to grips with is the fact of uh, is this function notation f of x and f of x is just another way of saying y and y is a function of x so if we have a graph and traditionally we would call this the x-axis and this would be the y-axis well sometimes you will see that the y-axis is also referred to as f of x so we take a value of x we put it into some function and then we get some output f of x so y equals f of x okay just clear this off. So we want to know what happens when I add or subtract a number to a function. What will happen to the function? How will it change? So I've got my good old friend Desmos here and we'll see we'll see the green line here this uh, function f of x equals x squared. So that's our typical quadratic function, the most basic quadratic function of all. Now let's see what happens when I add a value to it. So once again, in, in purple is our function. And what happens as a increases? Well, let's see what hap happens to the function. So as I increase the value a, so as a goes up, the function seems to go up. And you notice if a is 4, the function seems to pass through 4. Has the shape of the function changed? Absolutely not. The shape of the function is still the exact same as it was, but we'll notice that when we add or subtract a value to the function, the function moves up and down that y-axis. So let's formalize that. So f of x plus a. Okay, now, this is a vertical translation of the function. So if I add one to the function, it's going to move up by one. If I take one away, it's going to move down by one. So f of x plus a is a vertical translation of the function and it moves up and down the value a. Now let's see what happens. It moves up and down by a value of a. Now let's see what happens when I add something inside the brackets. So let's go back to Desmos. Um, we don't need that function anymore. We're going to look at this one, f of x I'm going to change that to a plus, f of x plus a. Okay, so there it is there in black. And when I increase the value of a, so when a was 2, let's see what happens. It seems that the function has moved up to the left. So when it was positive 2, it seemed to move left 2. Let's see what happens if I make it 3. Can you predict where it might go? So when a is 3, it moves left 3. What about if a was negative 4? Can you predict where the function might go? Well, let's change that a to a negative 4. And we can see when a is negative 4, the function has moved to the right 4. Now, just a word of caution here. Let's just change the function and uh, let's make that plus 3x, so something like this. Um, we can see there's our function, the original function there in green, and you'll notice that it crosses the axis here at 0, 0, and when I translate it, um, negative 4, it's moved to the right 4, so you'll see that the new solution is at 4 and if we move this the function moves 
So if I make this positive 4, you'll notice that well, in relation to this value, it's moved to the left 4. So let's check. 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can see clearly there, it's negative 7, 0. I would encourage you to explore this um, using Desmos yourself. So just type in what I've put, and you can change the function to whatever you like. Um, we could make it a cubic function and see what happens by changing the value. You'll see it's the same idea again. If x is negative, or sorry, if a is negative two, it seems to move to the right two. So let's formalize this. This is a horizontal translation of the function. And the important factor here is that it moves left and right by a value of negative a. So if it was, well, we will get to see a moment in a moment a few examples. So here we've got three functions, and I'm asked to apply the following transformations for each function above. Right, let's start with the first one, x squared. So we know that x squared looks like this. That's x squared. Um, f of x plus 3 well, remember this is the horizontal translation it's a horizontal translation of a value negative 3 so that's the original function this is f of x equals x squared and when I translate it and I do f of x plus 3 it's going to move three places to the left. So it's going to look something like that. And it might be worth noting that was the value 0, 0. And to just indicate that I know how the translation has worked, or the transformation has worked, it's shifted to the left 3, so it's negative 3, 0. So that's the first one. Let's do f of x plus 4. So f of x plus 4, we'll do here. This is f of x plus 3. Um, so f of x plus 4, so I'm just adding something on the end of the function. And if you remember correctly, this was a vertical translation by a value a. So it should move up the graph by 4 something like that and we know that this point here is going to be the point 0 4 and this is the function f of x plus 4 okay let's do this one here f of x subtract 2 you might even be getting the idea now at this point you might want to try it yourself pause the video if, if you do Okay, so f of x subtract 2, if the number is inside the bracket, so that means it's a horizontal translation, and we do the opposite of this. So instead of going 2 to the left, I'm going to go 2 to the right. So it's going to look something like this. And this point here is no longer going to be 0, 0. Remember, 0, 0 was the original function. It's moved 2 to the right. So this is the value 2, 0. And that was the function f of x subtract 2. OK, f of x minus 2. Now, the negative 2 is on the outside. It's not inside this bracket, so that's telling me that it's a vertical translation. It's a vertical translation, that means it's going to go down 2. So the graph must look something like 
this, and if 0, 0 was the original point, it's shifted down 2. It's now the point 0, negative 2. Okay, and that's the first few done. Let's have a look at the second one. f of x equals x cubed. f of x equals x cubed. Okay, so f of x equals x cubed looks something like this. Thumbs up like this. It turns there and then goes off to infinity. And this is the point zero, zero. So it's f of x equals x cubed. Okay, let's have a look at the first transformation we need to apply to it. In fact, I'm going to make a copy of all of them and bring them down. So we need to do these four transformations. Try that again. That one. That one, that one, that one. Copy. And bring them down here. And let's paste them over. Okay. So this is the original function then underneath we can do each one. Alright, lovely. So let's do a quick sketch of the axes again. f of x plus 3, so I'm adding 3 on the inside, it's inside the brackets. That means it's a horizontal translation of negative 3. So the graph will come up like this, pass through here, and then go on to infinity. And let's mark that point. That's going to be the point negative 3, 0. So it's shifted to the left 3. Second one, f of x plus 4. That's going to shift the graph up by 4. So the point of inflection is right here. When x is 0, y will be 4. This was f of x plus 3. And this is f of x plus 4. This one, f of x subtract 2. Again, similar idea. Not a whole lot change in here, provided you know the shape of your graph. Um, f of x subtract 2, it's inside the brackets. That's a horizontal translation. And instead of going 2 to the left, we go 2 to the right. So it's counterintuitive. It's going to pass through, say, here. And the function will look something like that, where that point is now 2. 0. And then finally, f of x subtract 2. I'm going to shift the curve down by 2 because this is a vertical translation. So something like that. That's a shocking low. Let's try that again. So it's coming up. Passes through there and back up this direction. So that's 0, negative 2. And just finally, I'll just label these f of x minus 2 and f of x minus 2 on the outside. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, there was another example I was going to do. Um, f of x equals 1 over x. You should have a go at that yourself, and you can always check your answers using the fantastic Desmos. So, pause the video and have a go. f of x equals 1 over x. There we have it there. Um, the first one we were trying to do, first one we were trying to do is f of x plus 3. So let's have a look at what that would look like. Um, this is the original function f of x, oh, let's make that 0, we want f of x 
plus 3 as the one inside the brackets. So this one here, let's make that a 3, f of x plus 3. Okay, what I'm predicting is going to happen here, it's inside the bracket, so the curve should, should shift to the left by 3. Let's have a look. And lo and behold, there it is, it's shifted to the left by 3. And you can see it's happened down here as well, it's shifted to the left by 3. You still contain the asymptotes though. And the other one we need to do is f of x plus 4. Put the 4 on the outside, so let's make a 4 x plus 4. Now what I think will happen here is the graph should shift up by 4. Now that means that the asymptote is no longer here. The asymptote should be at 4. Let's see what happens. And there it is. There's the asymptote. You can see the graph is going to get closer and closer and closer to 4 but it will never ever cut it. So the asymptote has moved. Um, next we need to do is f of x subtract 2, f of x subtract 2, and it's inside the brackets, so let's make that one disappear again, okay, f of x subtract 2, subtract 2, so again it's inside the brackets, which means it's a horizontal translation, so everything is going to shift to the right 2, the new asymptote I predict will be at 2. So the new asymptote will be at 2 and 0. So let's see what happens. And there it is. You can see this graph, the black graph, is getting closer and closer to the line x equals 2. But it will never ever cross it. And this asymptote has stayed the same. And then finally, I think it's f of x subtract 2. So it's going to shift down by 2, which means the horizontal asymptote will come down to x equals or y equals 2. I'll just draw on that line y equals 2 sorry y equals negative 2 All right so I predict that the graph is going to shift down by 2 and it's not going to cross this line. Let's have a look and there we go. You can see that the graph has been shifted down by 2. It's getting closer and closer to the red line but it will never ever Cross it. Okay, so that's it from me. Hopefully, you found the video useful. I'll be back again soon with transformations of functions too. All the best with the study, and I'll talk to you again sometime. Take it easy.